Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to 2021. We are in a new year. We're in a new studio. Isn't it all sparkly and new? We have a new strain of coronavirus. Yay, here in the UK, it's great. We're in a new lockdown. Anyway, enough of that depressing bullshit. We're not gonna be talking about that this year because this is 2021. 2020, it's a distant memory. It's an ugly relative we don't talk about anymore. We don't, we just see them every so often at, you know, Christmas and stuff. We're not gonna talk about them. We're talking about 2021, which is the more handsome, beautiful, and better smelling year. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about what photography equipment I'm gonna be using this year to take some cool portraits. Now, subscribers to the channel will know that I'm a photographer and a videographer. I'm not gonna be diving into the video equipment that I use because there's just too much to go into. I actually have two camera bags. One is for photo stuff, one is for video stuff it just gets too complicated if you do want to see what video stuff i use let me know in the comments below and we'll make a video about that separately but for today we're just going to focus on the main photography stuff that i use day to day now where better to start than talking about the camera bag itself pretty important. It's going to be carrying all your gear. You want to make sure it's safe. You want to make sure it's comfortable. I use the Low Pro Flipside 500 AW Mark II. Before that, I used a smaller version of this bag. I got it for my 18th birthday and it has only just given up the ghost. It literally last year, the zip went on it after, and I'm 31. So you do the maths on that. A long time it's lasted me. So now I've got a bigger version as well because I've got more equipment than I did when I was 18. It's large enough to store two camera bodies, a bunch of lenses, which we'll talk about in a minute. It also has weatherproofing. That's what the AW stands for, it's all weather. So it has like a nice rain cover so you can shoot in any conditions. And also being called the flip side, it obviously opens from the back. So that means if you're walking through the city or whatever and you're worried about somebody nicking something out of your bag, they can't do that basically because the zip is on your back. So once you've got it on your back, it's basically thief proof unless they mug you and and you've got bigger problems. Now, next thing on the list is the camera bodies. I have two Sony A7 Mark III bodies. I do all of my photography and video work on these things. I've got one here. One is recording this video right now. I absolutely love this camera. It's just so versatile and does everything I need. I also do have an A7S Mark II, but we don't really use that anymore. It's a little bit old now and it uses the smaller batteries that don't have a very good battery life. So we are actually gonna be selling that this year and just using these. So let's now talk about glass. I have five main lenses that I use. I do have a zoom lens, which I'm recording with now, which is the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter F 2.8, which is a great lens, but we only really use that for video work because sometimes we need a zoom to be a bit more flexible. But for stills, I mainly shoot on primes. So starting with the widest focal length and working our way up, I've got the Sigma 35 millimeter F1.4 DG HSM lens. I've had this lens since I first switched from Canon to Sony a couple of years ago now. And before then I had a version of this lens for my Canon 5D Mark III's that I had. I absolutely love the 35 millimeter focal length. It's so good for candid shots, especially when you're shooting inside people's houses or in smaller venues. In the UK, we have pretty small houses and venues, not like in America where everything's massive. So having a 35 millimeter is really, really useful. I, it saved my ass so many times. This thing is glued to my camera all of the time pretty much when I'm shooting candids and I don't know what to expect because I know I can reach for this thing and I'm going to get the shot. It's not the best lens optically. I have tested this lens. You can watch the review here. I've tested multiple times. It's pretty good. It's pretty sharp. It does everything you need. It's pretty affordable. It does have some fringing issues which really bug me. So I am waiting for Sigma to bring out a proper mirrorless camera version. So a DGDN version, hopefully sometime soon. Sigma, please just update this thing. Please, please. Please. Okay, next up is the Sigma 50mm f1.4. Again, I've had this focal length for forever. 50mm, everyone should have a 50mm. There's no excuse. You can get proper cheap ones. It's just so good. It's so good for portraits. I absolutely love this focal length. I don't use it as much as I used to because of the next lens we're going to talk about, which has completely swayed my opinion. But historically, I, this used to be my go-to. But it, it, still, it still has a fond place in my heart. I still love it. still use it from time to time. Really good for video as well. So this next lens is something that I picked up last year and it's a total game changer for me. It's the Sigma 85mm f1.4 DGDN. I love this lens, absolutely love it. It's so sharp, quick to focus, just so nicely built. I, I literally can't fault it and this is the thing that has torn me away from my 50mm. So typically as I've got two camera bodies I will always have um, two cameras on me. I'll have one camera with a 35 because it can get everything in the frame but then on the other camera I will tend to change between the different primes that I have. But at the moment this thing is glued to my other camera because I just love it for portraits. For single portraits so good. The bokeh looks amazing. You don't get any fringing. You don't get any of that crap. It's really sharp even when wide open. So I tend to just stick this thing on 1.4 and, and I know the shots are going to be pin sharp. Cannot recommend this lens enough. 
Here's a review if you want to watch it in detail. <sighs> So lens number four on my list is another fairly new one. It's not been out for very long. It's the Sigma 105 f2.8 macro lens that they announced last year, midway through last year. I've used this lens for shooting details uh, and also getting nice close-up shots of couples like intimately. Look, looks really cool. And the 105 focal length is really nice for full length portraits in a pinch as well. I know it's f2.8, but it still throws the background out enough. It's, it's pretty good and it's lightweight. It's good. It's a nice, nice all rounder. I like it. Okay, the final lens on my list is an absolute Hulk. I bought it because I needed something that was a little bit longer and I didn't want a heavy zoom. So I compromised and got the Sigma 135 f1.8. It's a bit of a beast, but for, you know, telephoto shots, if you want to get full, full length portraits as well, this thing's really, really good for throwing the background out. Really nice um, bokeh on it. It's just really heavy. So a wedding, it's not so practical because you're just lugging it around. It's proper beefy. So hang in, if that's hanging off your neck, it's going to hurt. So I tend to use it sparingly at like event jobs or weddings, but for single portraits, family shots, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's a nice lens. I do like it. I don't use it enough because of the 85 millimeter, but I do bring it out every so often and it, I fall in love with it all over again. So great lens. So moving away from lenses, let's talk about flashes. So I have two Godox V860 Mark IIs. I've had these since I bought my Sony a few years ago and they've never let me down really. They're really good. The recycle time is pretty good on them. They are lithium ion battery, so they're rechargeable, which is so good because I hate disposable batteries. Not only does it kill our mother earth, oh, but it also just means you've got a ton of dead weight in your bag because once the you've used them, you've then got to carry the old ones away. I just don't want to do that. So these rechargeable batteries are sick. They last forever. I barely have to charge these things um, because they just retain power for so long for some reason. I don't know why, but really, really good flashes. I can't recommend them highly enough. I've got two of them. They store really neatly in my bag. It means that I can shoot off camera whenever. My triggers are the Pixapro ST4s or STIV, whatever you want to call them. The reason why it's called Pixapro and not Godox is because in the UK, Godox is Pixapro, but you can still get Godox stuff. I, I don't know why, they just, it just is. This trigger also works with my large studio flashes, which are the Pixar Pro City 600 Pros. And that means that I can fire my flash guns in sync with my studio flashes. It's just cool. Just all works together seamlessly, which is really good. Another quick flash accessory that I bought is some gels, some little flash gun gels. They just slap on the front of my flash gun. Wasn't very expensive. Pretty good if you want to get creative anywhere. The Giotos, uh, what's it called? The rocket thing, blower? whatever it's called. Obviously with the mirrorless camera, you get dust on your sensor all the time. So quick is really helpful. Camera batteries, I have two massive, yeah, two lots of camera batteries. I don't buy official Sony batteries. I end up buying cheap ones. The ones that I got were the X-Pro. I've had friends who've got these and they last forever. I had some X-Pro batteries for my Canons and they lasted forever. These are just as good as the Sony ones and they're like a fraction of the price. So I've got loads of them because I'm really lazy and forget to charge stuff. So at least if I've got two bags full of camera, camera batteries, I'm never gonna run out of battery in theory. Another little trick, this is nothing, I didn't invent this, this is nothing new, but once I've used them, I tend to turn them round so that the label is showing so I know that that battery's dead. Sometimes people put stickers on them and stuff. Whatever floats your boat, you know, it's 2021, do we like? One thing I forgot to mention, I also have a few of these in my bag. These just came with my flash guns when I bought them off Amazon, just the freebie, you know, they usually chuck them in the bag. I tested these things out, they're actually pretty good, surprisingly so. They just take the, the harsh edge off your flash. If you can't bounce it off the ceiling or something, I tend to just point the flash upwards and then at least it's bouncing around in here and coming forwards. It, it works pretty well. It diffuses the flash, makes it not quite as harsh, especially at things like weddings where you have to use it for dance floors and stuff because it's too dark. So these are pretty good. If you don't get one with your flash gun, you can buy them on eBay for a couple of pence or cents or yeah, you, they're cheap but good. Okay, final thing is a no-brainer really. I've got racks and racks of memory cards. I've happened to pick up the box that has hardly any of them in. <laughs> well done, Tom. But I've got three of these boxes. These are just waterproof, dustproof boxes from, can't remember who the make is. It's just, I think they're just a cheap one off Amazon. These are brilliant. You can basically stomp on these and it's not gonna wreck your memory cards. It also means you haven't got memory cards rattling around your, your bag, which is a nightmare. Just like the camera batteries, as you can see here, if I've used a memory card recently, I'll turn it around just so I know, Tom, don't put that in your camera and format it, you idiot, because you'll cry yourself to sleep again. I use all sorts of memory card sizes. I don't tend to pick, you know, we've got some 32s, 64s and keep going incremental scale. For smaller jobs, I'll use smaller cards for 
jobs where I don't know how much data I'm going to need to record, I'll use the bigger cards just so that I don't have a bunch of 128 gig cards with like a few files on it and then I'm too petrified to format it. It's just silly. We use Lexar cards for no other reason than they're just more competitively priced than SanDisk at the moment. They're pretty good. No complaints very fast. Okay, so that's pretty much everything in my camera bag. If you want to see bigger things like tripods and stuff, like I said, link in the description below because technically it's not in my camera bag and I don't use a tripod all the time because I'm just shooting with primes and I shoot wide open. I very, very rarely need a tripod unless I'm shooting some sort of video that requires stable footage. And we're not talking about video, okay? I've told you, stop bringing it up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. We will be getting back to our normal scheduled lens reviews next week. I hope you liked this video. It's a little bit different. I thought, why not start the new year with something new and test out the studio? If you'd like to see a video about our studio and the behind the scenes workings of this place and what we use, let me know in the comments below and we will make that happen for you for sure. Anyway, that's about it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, as always, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We release new videos just like this every single Friday, so I look forward to seeing you then. Happy New Year!